So here we are back in Dreamweaver. And what I'm going to ask us to do at this point is to start out by creating a proper site. Now, when you're dealing with uh, any project in Dreamweaver, the uh, standard protocol before you begin is to go to your site window, as you can see here, and you could define a new site. Now, when you are doing this, and here we are in the site information area, we can just set up a simple name. So I'll say fixed. And we will now locate the local site folder. So um, I'm just going to go onto my desktop and we can um, create a new folder here called fixed and I'll just create there and I'll choose that one so there we have our information now if we wanted to at this particular point in time you could also go in and define server information to upload your work but um, we're not doing that we're just defining our site quite simply as we can see right here Local info, if you wanted to give even more information, you could also do that. And these are just Dreamweaver extras and not really things that I'm uh, dealing with at the moment. So I'm just defining my local root folder in the site window here. So we can save this now. Now, as you can see, we don't really have any information here. So what I'm going to do is to just set up the basic skeleton of our website. So I'll say new file and I will create an index.html file as you can see there. Inevitably and eventually I'll be creating a CSS file to style all of my work. So here in the local root folder I'm actually going to anticipate this by creating a folder right now called CSS but when we insert our CSS a little bit later we will actually define the name of that folder and so on. So at this point in time what you can do is just double click the index information. Um, I had an in untitled file open at the time but I'm going to close that so as you can see here it says index.html. At the moment we can come in and change our title to something like fixed pixel uh, layout and you'll notice that inside of Dreamweaver's code view we have a title now that says fixed pixel layout so if you're following along outside of Dreamweaver all you really got to do at this point is to define your local root folder by creating an index.html page in it CSS folder next to it and we'll be creating the CSS folders as we go along and I'll be showing you where the links um, will take place and how it's going to be written but if you're following in Dreamweaver define your site as I did and now we're ready to introduce information if you're in the design view and you only see the design I encourage you to go to the split screen view so that we could take a look at the code as we go about writing that code so at this point what I can say is we're going to start by defining our fixed pixel layout. Now the first thing we'll do is to create our CSS page because our CSS page is going to be defining how all of this information is going to be distributed and how it's going to end up looking the way it does. So we'll come here and we'll click on the new CSS rule button and as you can see it says you know choose your contextual selector so we're assuming that you know a little bit about CSS and even if you don't you can follow along and still be able to manage with this exercise we're not creating a class in this case I'm not even creating an ID although we will be using that a little bit later um, however I do want to redefine a HTML element Normally we could come in here and we could say, look, everything that's on the body, let's make the body look a certain way. But first and foremost, what I'm going to do is to redefine a tag, but the tag that I want to redefine will be the asterisk symbol. So I put in an asterisk sign here because what I'm going to attempt to do is to create a definition that will be applied to every single tag on this page. What that actually means is we will be creating, as you'll see in just a second, the opportunity to pare down all of our tags so that they have zero margins and zero padding. 
Now I'll explain why we're doing that in just a second as we go about um, doing that in the rest of our video. But before we get to that point, after you've chosen this asterisk selector, or in our case we'll define that as the universal selector, it'll be applied to everything. Before we click OK, we want to choose where this rule will be defined. And if we were to say this document only, we would be writing the CSS in the head section of this document. Now, that's something that we normally don't do. It's easier to externalize your CSS, and it's something that will work a whole lot better if you have more than one page in your website. And more than likely, you do have more than one page. So, to take full advantage of CSS, we're going to create a new style sheet and this style sheet will be externalized. So when we click OK, the first thing it asks us is, well, you say you want an external style sheet, but where do you want to save it? So you can open up your windows and actually show where this thing will in fact be saved. So notice, I'm going to go to the desktop where we created that fixed pixel over here. And now that I'm inside of Fixed, I'm going to open up the CSS folder in here, and we'll create something called, let's just call it style.css. So notice that the URL says, well, it's located inside of CSS folder, inside style.css. That's excellent. It's relative to the document, meaning this is our root folder, and right next to this index page, you'll find a folder called CSS, inside of which is style.css. So let's click Save. Perfect. So now we will define the rule for the asterisk. So what I want you to do is to go to the box category, and in the CSS box model, we're going to say same for all padding 0, same for all margin 0. Now what that does is it ensures that all the elements on our page, anything, whether it's the body, whether it's a paragraph, anything like that, is all going to have zero margin and padding. At this point, the only reason I'm doing this is because when we write CSS and we're working with CSS layout, some of the most common problems arise because of differences in browsers. Well, Internet Explorer has proprietary um, browser technology that handles the spacing of margins differently than other browsers. So this can sometimes create some unwanted and undesired effects when it comes to separating content or making things move around. And if you're off by even a pixel in certain cases, that will break your design. It'll make columns appear on top of each other instead of next to each other the way you intended. So one of the easiest ways to sort of alleviate this issue is to set all of your elements to zero margin and padding and then we'll apply margin and padding as we go along, as we need it, because we still need to space things. So as we continue in this process, I'll be talking to you a little bit more about how this will be changed by dealing with margin and padding on an element-by-element -element basis. So we'll talk more about that as the need arises. So at this point, we're setting everything to zero margin and padding, and we're going to click OK. And you'll notice right away that when I have my cursor blinking on this blank page, at the moment, you can see that there's no margin and padding. If I were to write in some text, it's squished up right against the edge, as you can see right there. So that just goes to prove that the little universal selector that I have here. So I'm on CSS, current styles, all. If you go to current styles, you'll see the asterisk is saying, you know, HTML margin and padding zero. So here, if I go back to all, you can see there's my asterisk and there's my example of zero margin and padding. Also, take note of this. For those of you who are attempting to do this outside of Dreamweaver, notice that what Dreamweaver did was to create a link in the head section to the CSS style sheet. So if you're following along, you can just type in this information, link href CSS style dot CSS um, style sheet, and the type is text slash CSS. So that's something that you can write along if you're not following with Dreamweaver. But nevertheless, as you can see, we've got all of this information. 
if we took a look at our CSS page, here we have this information saying margin padding set to zero, asterisk is the universal selector. So let's go back to our source code and see what our HTML page looks like. All right, so now that we've described the universal selector, in the next video we're going to talk about how to prepare our body for a centering background or a centering container div.